let us continue with the structure of heart. What we have seen so far is uh, the blood which is received in the right auricle. Now let us talk about the left auricle, how it receives blood and then we will come to the ventricle part. And after we are done with everything, then we will draw the outermost layer that is pericardium. This is left atrium or left auricle which is going to receive oxygenated blood from the lungs. And this oxygenated blood comes here through pulmonary veins. So there are pulmonary veins which are going to bring oxygenated blood. And there are four pulmonary veins, two coming from each lung. So this is, these two are pulmonary veins and total number of four. So if we are talking about these two coming from the left lung, two would be coming from this side. So we won't see the tubes here, we would just see the openings. So these are the openings of two pulmonary veins which are coming from the right lung and two which are coming from the left lung. So in all, four pulmonary veins are there and pulmonary veins do not have valves or their openings do not have valves. The reason is same because the entry into the auricle is at an angle. So when auricle contracts, this opening closes on its own. So now this means the right auricle has received deoxygenated blood from all over the body parts and left auricle has received oxygenated blood from the lungs. Now the valve which separates this auricle from the ventricle. Here we have named it as right auriculoventricular valve. Here we will call it left AV valve. That is again say left auriculoventricular valve. And this valve is a bicuspid valve. That means if we see the section of this one, here we saw three cusps. In this case, we would see only two such flap like things. That means it is a bicuspid valve. And it is also known as mitral valve. So it is also called mitral valve. This is on the left side. So auriculoventricular valves. On the right side, there are three cusps. So we call it tricuspid valve. On left side, there are only two flaps, so we call it bicuspid valve. Plus, this bicuspid valve is also given one name, that is mitral valve. Now, let us see which type of blood is coming here. From the right auricle, deoxygenated blood comes into the ventricle, right ventricle. From here, the oxygenated blood comes into the left ventricle. We have seen that the wall of left ventricle is thicker as compared to the right one and this wall is made up of cardiac muscles and this is three times thicker as compared to the wall of right ventricle. So it is three times thicker as compared to right ventricle or the wall of right ventricle. Now let us see how these two compartments pump the blood and where should this blood go to? Auricles are receiving compartments and ventricles as we said they are pumping compartments. But before that we have drawn the wall of the ventricle slightly irregular. There are two types of bulges which we see here. Some smaller bulges and some taller bulges. So let us name these two structures which are there on the wall. The smaller ridges are known as columni cornae and the taller ridges like these ones they are called papillary muscles. Now what is the function of these ridges? These ridges or rather to this taller ridges that is papillary muscles are attached cordy tendini. Cordy, cordy tendini they extend from 
these taller structures and go up to the bottom of these flaps. So from here it would attach to the bottom of this valve and same thing is going to be here also uh, like this the bigger and the smaller ridges. So these taller are papillary muscles. So from here these chordae tendini they extend up to the base of the valves. So these flaps which we have drawn here they are called these ones they are chordae tendini. Now what exactly is the role of this? These cusps, the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valves, those cusps which are there, they are thin flaps, skin like flaps and these flaps have to regulate the blood flow. So when auricles contract, these flaps are going to open like this so that blood from auricle comes into the ventricles. When ventricles contract, one, the contraction has to be uh, or is going to be stronger because the walls are thicker, more muscle. So when these ventricles contract, these flaps which are open like this, they would close. But because they are very thin structures, there is a risk that these flaps can go back like this. And if this movement takes place in a reverse manner, then the blood from ventricle will go back into the auricles. So these chordae tendini, they are attached to the base of the flap. So if this is a bicuspid valve having two flaps, the chordae tendini would be attached here. So when auricles contract, the valve opens. But when the ventricles contract, the chordae tendini are going to hold these flaps at their position. That means they would stay here and reverse movement of the valves is going to be prevented. And these chordae tendini are present in both the parts. That means here also are these chordae tendini are there and in the right as well as in the left ventricle. So attached to the base of the cusps are chordae tendini and these at the other end are attached to the papillary muscles which are the taller ridge like structures which are present on the ventricular wall. This partition which is the interventricular septum and as it is completely formed, there is complete separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. And as you can see, it is slightly oblique. It is not a straight partition. It is slightly towards the left side. So now the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle and oxygenated blood from the left ventricle must be pumped out. Deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle would be sent to the lungs and the blood vessel which is going to take it is pulmonary artery. So let us see how this pulmonary artery is. So this artery arises from here and then it divides into two branches. Now I am going to erase all these parts because we have already understood the structure. So this is the pulmonary artery and as we can say, see it is arising from the right ventricle, it would be carrying deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. This would go towards the left lung, this would go towards the right lung. So this is pulmonary arch or pulmonary artery and after it comes out then it is going to get divided into two branches. At the opening of this pulmonary artery again there are valves. So these valves are here, we just draw it like this but these are tricuspid valves and they are known as semilunar valves. So opening of pulmonary artery also has valves. We will label it here. Say let us take it here and these are semilunar valves and these semilunar valves are tricuspid. That means they would have the same three types or three semicircular cusps. So deoxygenated blood 
is taken by the pulmonary artery to the lungs for oxygenation. Now, from the left ventricle, aorta or the left systemic arch arises, which is going to take oxygenated blood to all body parts. So now let us see the blood vessel which is arising from here. It is the main artery. And again, after I draw the aorta, I'm going to erase other structures so that our focus is on aorta. It arises from here. And then as we said, in mammalian heart, it goes on the left side. So this is the aorta. And here it gives rise to three branches. So here we see those three branches arising from aorta and this is the aorta which is going on the left side. Let me erase all these things which are in between. So now this is the aorta and this aorta also has the same semilunar valves. So this semilunar valve and this they are also same tricuspid valve. So opening of pulmonary artery as well as aorta. They have same semilunar valves which are tricuspid valve. And aorta after it emerges then it divides into branches uh, like the branchial artery, the uh, carotid artery, subclavian artery. It divides into branches. And this is going to supply blood to all body parts. So to sum up, two compartments have received blood. Right auricle from all the body parts through superior inferior vena cava and here was that coronary sinus which was bringing blood from the heart wall. Left uh, auricle receives oxygenated blood from both the lungs through four pulmonary veins, two coming from each side. When they contract, the blood is pumped into their respective ventricles. So deoxygenated comes in right ventricle, oxygenated blood comes in left ventricle. When ventricles pump or contract, deoxygenated blood is taken by pulmonary artery to the lungs for oxygenation and oxygenated blood from the left ventricle is taken by aorta or left systemic arch and then it is supplied to all body parts. Now after we have done everything, the last thing which needs to be drawn in this diagram is pericardium. We have already seen the structure. So we draw a line which shows the pericardium. And when we are talking about pericardium, we are normally talking of the serous layer, which is double membrane. The outer is parietal and inner is visceral. So these two layers are there. That is our pericardium. As we have already done it separately, this is pericardium. And in between these two layers, there would be this fluid also, which is the pericardium cardial fluid. We have already discussed this in the segment when we were talking about the wall of the heart. So this is the complete internal structure of human heart. Bird's heart is also same but for one difference that this aorta or systemic arch which arises from the left ventricle instead of going on the left side it would take a right turn. That is the only difference otherwise. The mammalian heart and the heart of birds is same. But this is the detailed structure of the human heart. Now we have understood the structure. Now we will see the working of.